Today, we are going to be doing a cat on a pumpkin. So you are going to need a either a pencil or a Sharpie marker, depending on how confident you are. If you wanna go permanent, then go with the marker. If you wanna kinda of draw it out with the pencil, you're welcome to. You're gonna need acrylic paints that are orange, blue, black, yellow. I think that's it. But check the list just to make sure. You're going to need an assortment of paint brushes and you're going to need your canvas. Today we are going to start with the cat. Again, if you want to start with a pencil, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be starting with a Sharpie and you're going to start with your cat's head. We're going to have the cat sitting there on the pumpkin. I'm going to start with the cat's head. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger as I work on it. So I'm going to go there. So note, I, I originally started here and I thought, you know, that's not going to be quite big enough. So I'm going to make it bigger. And feel free to just keep drawing right over what you've done because everything inside of the cat is going to be black. It's not going to matter. Everything inside is going to be black. We're going to go up here and we're going to do I think a softly angled triangle for both of his ears. Softly angled triangle for both of the ears. And then we're going to start kind of the middle of his head. I'm going to give him a really big raindrop body that's going to come right back up. Really big raindrop body. Right here from the head. To that raindrop, we're going to form some shoulders. I'm going to go on and, and fatten this fella up just a little bit more. Give him a little more thickening here. So notice that it's very fluid as you look and as you think, you can decide. That's why I made his body a little thicker now. And I'll even probably adjust the shoulders just a little bit more when I get there. But this was just to give you a layout, just an idea. And you're going to take the very bottom and go on and do your crook for his tail and follow that idea all the way back, doing your best to keep it as even as possible doing your best to keep it as even as possible. Always remember, if I go a little bit fast for you, feel free to pause the video, work on it, and come right back to it. Now we're going to work on the pumpkin that he is sitting on. To do that, I'm going to take a little bit of my orange now I'm going to start with just my pure orange. I always have a hard time working on an easel because I always want to pick it up. And have a full range of motion. I'm going to go as close as I can to the side of this tail. If a little bit gets onto, onto the tail, I'm not going to cry about it. That's not a big deal. And I'm going to make just a nice angular motion. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a nice angular motion that meets that. It's going to be the first section of my pumpkin. Again, if some is getting onto your cat's body, that's not a big deal. It's going to be black anyway. Nobody's going to know but you. I'd rather have these lines right because that's what people are going to see. Notice that even when I was filling in with short brush strokes, I still kept my lines going in the very same direction. Don't ever go in to touch something out, up and go, you know, to the side or something like that. All right, so that's going to be section one of my pumpkin. Now I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to dip it into my orange. 
but I'm also going to dip just the corner into a little bit of brown. I want you to see on there, a little bit of orange, a little bit of brown. Actually, a lot of bit of orange and a little bit of brown. Okay. From here on, I'm going to do my best to not touch this center pure orange. Okay. I'm going to take this and make my first boundary line right there. And I'm going to be pulling out. That is quite a bit of brown. I got a little excited, it looks like. So, to try to help counter that as I make these next strokes, I'm only going to be adding orange for myself. That was quite a bit of brown. You want him to look um, like a dirty pumpkin in the field. I had a couple of lumps show up there. Sometimes that will happen if your paint isn't mixed well or if your paint has sat out for a while. Older paint will also do that. So you want to be aware to not have lumps in it there. And once you feel like you've reached the fullness of your pumpkin. You can stop. I really feel like my pumpkin needs more, so I'm going to go on and pause for a second. I'm going to get myself a little bit more orange. I feel like that has a little more to give. So let's play with that side just a little bit more. start focusing on broadening out my side here. You can always tell an artist that has been working on their medium for a while versus the newbies by an artist that will completely cover the canvas versus a newbie who will forget. So try to make sure that you don't forget. We have our one side finished. And now I'm gonna take that orange A little bit of brown. Remember, much more orange than brown. And we're going to do that again right here. Trying to keep those broad strokes. And then you're going to build this side of the pumpkin out as well. Quite a bit more building to do on this side. My husband has an uncle that raises pumpkins. One of my very favorite fall activities is to go out into the field and pick with my husband. We usually go out at night, mid-fall. I think about the pumpkins out in the field, under the stars in the sky in the cool evening. I 
can only imagine in this picture what this cat is looking out at. Again, remember, all this, if it touches, it's not a big deal. I would rather it touch and go over because you're going to cover that with black paint anyway. Now, we've got a little bit of um, ground that will show right here on this side because I made the pumpkin uneven, as many of our pumpkins that we pick are. I'm going to go on and grab myself another brush. I'm going to take this opportunity. Get just a little bit of brown. And I'm going to change it up. Go to about here. And I'm just going to dab away. If the brown alone doesn't give you enough of a variation, you can add it with something. I have a little bit of extra gray over here, so I'm going to mix those two. Just in putting my brush into a little bit of gray and a lot of bit of brown. And I'm going to dab that as well. It gives a nice variation to it. The most difficult spot is going to be right here on your edge. So just be aware. Know that it's going to be hard and be ready for it. And you'll be just fine with it. Remember, if you make a mistake, something doesn't go the way you think it should, take a minute, look at the picture, and decide how you can make it look like that decision was on purpose. Most often, there is a way to actually make your picture better after you've made a mistake. You'll just take the time to look back and see it. Now, because this is a black cat, you're probably not going to put him up against a black night sky. So just decide for yourself what you think might be a very nice, deep color. Maybe you want your cat to be looking out in the day. In my head, because of my life experiences, I've, I've only imagined it being night. That doesn't mean that it has to be night for you. So we're going to start with the blue for the sky. If you choose to stop and dry everything with a hair dryer, that's most certainly a great option. You don't necessarily have to do that though. More often than not, if you start on the top and then work your way down, you're going to find that most, most sections, maybe not all, but most sections are pretty dry for you. Be very conscious of the strokes that you choose to make when you start to do your sky. For example, as I'm just starting to finish up this top edge here, I'm starting to doubt this choice of doing these nice straight strokes. Because though it does give a really nice look when I get down here, it's going to be very hard to maintain. So if I'm going to change it, this would be the time for me to change it.
Let's live dangerously. I think I'm going to keep it this way. Another option, if you're a little concerned about being able to keep this nice, steady, back-to-back -back motion. Another option would be to go in little semicircles. That gives a beautiful texture. And it will also make your life so much easier when you're down here. But I'm feeling bold today. I'm going to try it side to side. Just because I like the way this particular acrylic is behaving. Where you can kind of see through it some. I think that that's going to give a really nice look. You'll notice often, not always, but often, that an acrylic paint that is designed for the canvas, just a regular acrylic paint, will often have a slightly see-through behavior to it. Whereas often a craft paint will be more solid. So as you look at different brands and you note and you think, remember that sometimes most of the time, it can be quite beneficial to have some of each. In your studio or in your art box, whatever you have. Again, those borders are going to be your most difficult areas. So just know it and be ready for it. Don't be scared of it. You're going to be fine. For me, with my left-handedness, a nice flat brush will go a long way to help me. Don't forget to go all the way to the side. And don't forget to remember, nice, firm, steady strokes. Just enjoy it. For me, I have one more side. I'm working this down, if you find yourself taking more time, that's perfectly fine. Do not hesitate. Pause the video. And enjoy it as long as you want before jumping back in to join me. So hard to get around a subject. Because of the difficulty, if you're somebody who says, well, you know, I think I'd just rather do the entire background first. That's fine. It's going to add several extra steps for you, though. If you're somebody that doesn't have too much time and you just want to sit down and create one day, um, you would need to then... Do your entire background. 
dry it. And then personally, I would do white on everything that I was about to paint. So I would paint the cat and the pumpkin white. Then I would go back through and paint the cat and the pumpkin the colors that were intended. So just a few extra steps, but it may be worth it to you. It stresses you out to do it this way. Again, pause if you need to. Not a big deal at all. This is a great time to stop and draw a uh, dry your painting before doing the cat. Because it's black and I, I'm not super worried about smearing of colors because I know how dominant black really is, I'm going to plow right on through. It's hard to see on the video, but there's just a very light border because I chose to do the black Sharpie. So now I'm going to treat this like the world's greatest coloring sheet. And I'm going to put my black right on my edges first. Help myself out. Some people get torn up whether you're using an angled or a flat brush. I say whatever brush that when you're doing your borders, because now your borders really matter, whatever brush that you feel the most confident working with, that's the brush that you should be using right now. Whatever brush that you feel like gives you the most control, then that's the one that you need to have in your hand right now. So if you would like to add extra textures to your cat, you most certainly can. What I find with a picture like this is when there is such a nice variety of texture, the pumpkin, the ground, the sky, a lot of times it can be nice for the eye to have a place to rest. And so as much as this acrylic will allow, which the cat acrylic that I'm using is a craft paint, a craft acrylic, whereas this other was an artist acrylic. You can see a big difference there. Also, different brands are going to behave differently as well, so keep that in mind. But because there's already so much texture, I'm going to do what I can here to make the cat pretty solid, pretty decently solid. And don't forget your strokes. Make sure that if you're wanting, have a nice rounded bottom for the cat, then your strokes should be rounding out the bottom of the cat. You'll be surprised with the little texture that is left from your brush strokes, how much it will help your audience to 
see your intentions. And from here, if I want to go in and develop those shoulders a little more or develop anything else about the body of my cat, this is a great time to do it. Now, tough, tough, tough is this tail. So I'm going to do what I can to be fearless. Ooh, I'm going to put him down and I'm going to go for it. Nothing to it, right? Bring me a little more black. Boy, I really utilized the black today. For sure, for sure. Just a little bit more on there. I'm going to go again. Start kind of mid and then pull my way up. Again, because the black dominates, if you did not choose to stop to dry, any other color is just going to mix right in. That is not going to be a very big deal for you if you track a little bit of colors into that black. It's going to mix in really well. Now, not all colors will behave like that, so just be aware. Black is so dominant. From here, if you want to add extra, you can add a mouse to the side looking up at your cat. Once it's dry, you can add Sharpie um, to give your cat some whiskers coming out from his head. If you wanted to take a brush, and some white. If it didn't bother you to get a little bit messy, messy, you can actually take white on a brush or a toothbrush. You can flick just like this. You can add white to the sky if that's something that you like. Or while it's wet, you can grab just a little dab of glitter, uh, lay it nice and flat, just sprinkle a little bit of glitter to give yourself some um, starlight to the sky. I'm pretty content with him. I'm going to leave him just as he is for myself. I hope that you enjoyed this art on the farm and making the cat on a pumpkin canvas with me. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much to the Monroe Area Council for the Arts for allowing us to be a part of this project. Have a nice time. Goodbye.